Welcome to Roadmap to One Million. My name is Stacey Zeal, and if you're looking to make more money, gain your time back, and rapidly grow your visibility so that you can impact way more people with your brilliance, you're in the right place. This podcast is your one-stop shop for turning your online business dreams into a reality. My main goal is to give women entrepreneurs just like you the marketing strategies, guidance, and expert insights you need to hit that million-dollar milestone and beyond. Whether you're a coach, a consultant, or an online brand that wants to make a big impact, Roadmap to One Million gives you the actionable strategies and inspiration you need so that you can implement right away, no fluff, no fuss. So CEO, are you ready to buckle up and accelerate your growth? Be sure to follow the show and let's dive in. Get ready to uncover your Roadmap to One Million. All right, y'all. Welcome back to Roadmap to One Million. My name is Stacy, and I am your host. And I am here with another awesome, exciting guest. And as you can tell by the title, y'all, we are going to be talking about something that y'all have literally been telling me that you needed for months. Um, I did an audience survey not too long ago, and y'all told me what you needed. So what I do as the host is I bring on what you need. So today, I have a sales growth consultant here talking today. And um, she is going to be talking us through her methodologies for increasing leads, increasing sales, closing more sales, all that kind of good stuff. So make sure y'all are locked in. Make sure that you have your notepad or however you're taking notes for this. Um, And be sure to make sure that you visit the show notes after the show. We do actually post um, all of our guest links. Any kind of resources that we mentioned today are going to be in the show notes. And finally, if you have not followed the show, please make sure that you follow the show We have new episodes that come out every Tuesday. And so I want to make sure that if you are not following the show, if you're new here or you've been, you know, kind of checking in here and there, make sure that you hit that follow button or whatever platform you're listening on so we can um, listen so that you can get this episode and every episode that we that comes out after this. So welcome to the show, Celia. How are you? I'm doing well, Stacey. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you here today. Um, A lot of people want to know how to increase their leads, increase their sales. And so that is what your expertise is. And that was what we were going to talk about a little bit, a little bit about today. Um, And so tell us a little bit about your background, who you help, who you serve, just give us, uh, give us a little bit of your, a a little bit of your journey so we can, um, I love to set the stage here so we can really kind of, you know, jump into the meat of the conversation. So let us know a little bit about your journey, your background and how you help people. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a career entrepreneur. I started my first business fresh out of grad school in 2008. And so I had an in-person business for many years, for about eight years, and it was in the music industry. So I taught lessons, I gigged, I freelance, like you name it, I did it. And I found my way into the coaching space in late, uh, late 2014, like mid to late 2014, got my first business coach, drank the Kool-Aid, it was totally hooked and continued on the journey and found myself going full time into coaching in 2016 and closed my music business at that time and just continued to evolve on the journey and found my way that I had a natural gift for sales. I had a natural gift for follow up and decided to use those natural gifts with actually skill development and training to become what I am today and continue to evolve as a sales growth consultant. So that's the Cliff Notes version. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that um, you mentioned that you started your biz out of college and like, because I I have a similar story. I went, when I was in college and I was just focused on college, but once I got out of college, I got my first job. I was like, ooh, I can help anybody with their marketing now. Like I can help everybody. Mm -hmm. So I just was like, I can help you with, I started taking on freelance clients. I'm like, I can help you with your social media. I can help you with this. I can help you with that. I can right. help you build your website. And so <laughs> I love that we have a similar kind of, similar kind of background. <laughs> yeah. And it was like that too. Cause initially I did a lot of kind of um, life purpose coaching. I was definitely on the softer side and, and, you know, soft skill side. And then people kept coming to me, asking me about money and about business. And it was a trend. And I thought, okay, like, why don't I just be a business coach? And so initially I focused as a business coach and then over time niche down more into the sales thing. But I was definitely like marketing, sales, social media offers, all of that stuff. And then I reached a point where I thought, you know, 
You know, I don't, I don't love helping people build offers. Mm -hmm. I like working with people that have proven offers that are already converting, that they're already selling, and we're helping them to scale up and optimize. And that can be a business that is just below a hundred K and wants to scale up to that 200 K mark. And then I have clients that are around half a million. And then I have clients that have surpassed seven figures. So I really can work from the whole, all of the journey. It's just that a couple things that they have to place, have in place. Number one, they have to have marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they absolutely have to have marketing. And that's why I love connecting and pairing up with marketing experts like yourself, Stacey, because like, you know, if you help a company drive all of those leads, but then they're not converting and selling, mm -hmm. you know, in the same thing for sales, I can come and help you do like these amazing processes and all of the things that you have no, nobody to talk to you know, that's the other side of the coin. So that's who I serve now and what I do. And I work with clients in two really distinct ways. One is their inside sales departments. So they have rolling role enrollment, sort of ongoing sales calls that they're doing to fill usually high ticket group programs, um, high end masterminds, and maybe some high level higher price ticket one-on-one. -on -one. And then I have clients who can cross over and they do launches and events. And so these are clients that are doing like a virtual conversion event, a webinar, a challenge. And I help them on the sales side with either staffing sales team for that event or being a sales support to help them really optimize the whole conversion experience for their prospects. Yeah. Yeah, I love that because that's just like when you were, you know, just talking about pairing up with marketing um, experts, because I love the same to pair up with sales experts, because mm -hmm. a lot of people, I think, um, and let me give a story to give a little bit of context. So I remember when I started my, when I was leaving Zappos, I had started my ad agency because I was like, I know how to run ads. So I'm starting an ad agency. Like, you know, that's just, there was not a whole lot of thought into it. It just was like, I know how to run ads. So I would run ads for people. Um, and one of the things I realized, like I got a bunch of clients really quickly and was, you know, just like kind of, uh, looking at what was going on. And I realized I'm like, ads are not your problem. The problem is your sales is, is your customer journey. The problem is that you're, you know, not, um, you're not able to build your community organically and you're not actually, or you're not actually showing up to do the things you need to do organically to bring in the number of leads that you need, or something's broken with the funnel, something's messed up with the customer journey. And so I just was like, I, I ended up evolving my business and really focusing on um, being a fractional CMO because I wanted to have a more holistic look at the marketing because it's not just one piece, right? Like, you know, it's not just, I need ads. A lot of times it is like, you know, we, you have, you, when you're thinking about ads, there are a couple, couple dots that are also missing, right? Like people are dropping off on your funnel. You're not converting enough people. And so I love how you talked about the alignment in sales and marketing. So can you talk to a little bit more about to, to our um, CEOs about that? Like Mm -hmm. why, you know, like marketing and sales are definitely two distinct fields, but they also, I think I look at them like cousins, right? Like they have to work together or even, I would maybe even say siblings, right? Like they have to work together. You can't have marketing without sales. You can't have sales without marketing. And so they have to work together, but tell us a little bit about, um, where that line is between someone, something, you know, how do they know whether they're having a marketing problem or whether they're having a sales problem? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good point. So when you, so when you're looking at the marketing, it's going to be, you know, how it's almost hard to like to silo them. <laughs> so yeah. if we were going to say marketing, we could say symptoms, um, not getting enough leads, not getting enough qualified leads, right? We're getting our calendar booked, but the, the wrong people are coming in, right? So then we know we've got a messaging problem. We've got a positioning problem, or we've got a show up rate problem, right? Which show up rate is, is one of those to me, it's kind of intersect sales, marketing, operations, even because there's ways that we can attack it from all angles mm -hmm. to improve that show up rate for calls. Um, and then that sales problem is always also going to be like your conversion rate. It's like, I'm talking to a lot of people. Um, I'm, and I think these are the right people, but they're not buying, like they're not pulling out the credit card to give me the digits. Right. Mm -hmm. So then we know, okay, something's going on with your sales call, with your, you know, with your sales rep, with your scripting, something's happening or 
this is where we can really look at marketing and sales together. How are we warming them up to get them ready for that call? Are we pre-handling objections? Mm -hmm. And so that's really where I like to look at that kind of that crossover of like, how can we, can I interface with marketing and say, Hey, let's do a series on these top five objections subtly, of course, like let's use persuasion and help people show them through other like client stories. Um, how, you know, Sally came in and she was really dealing with this and this block mindset block held her back. And now she's here, 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 right. So people can relate. So there's a lot of ways that we can do that, but I think that's really where like sales and marketing can align, but those are sort of the two distinct ways that I would say, like, you know, the lead quality, not enough leads, um, conversion rates are low and I'm sure there's more stuff, but that's, that's coming up top of mind right now. Yeah. I think that was great because that's, um, it's very, clear um, in a sense that if you are having a marketing problem, if you're getting on the phone with people and these are not the right people that are getting on the phone, likely you have a, mar a marketing problem. Like it's, it's something yeah. within the marketing that you can identify what's going on and getting the wrong people into your, into your marketing ecosystem. But then if you mm -hmm. are doing these sales calls and you are like, these are absolutely qualified people, you know, they're going, maybe they're going through your sales, uh, they're filling out your forms or your sales call forms and things like that. So you can understand like, these are the right people, but they're not converting in the sales. Um, and then you can start to understand that like, Hey, I'm maybe I'm, I'm having a sales problem and I need to figure out where I, what levers I can pull on the sales side to actually get more people to move through and be actually become clients and customers. So I think it was very, definitely very clear. Leading your marketing as the CEO can be time consuming and draining, which leads to inconsistent marketing and slow growth. If you're looking to supercharge your sales, gain your precious CEO time back, and increase your impact, our fractional chief marketing officer service at Stacey Zalen Co. is your secret weapon. Picture this, no more missed deadlines, no more unfinished campaigns, no more jumping from tactic to tactic. You can absolutely achieve all of that without pouring more of your time into marketing, even if you have a small and inexperienced team. Want to know how? Head over to stacyzeal.co slash CMO right now to watch our free video. We'll show you the exact strategies and tactics that have helped countless online service providers, coaches, and consultants just like you skyrocket their sales with their existing team. Don't miss out on this opportunity to transform your business. Visit stacyzeal.co slash CMO today to watch the video and get ready to make more money, gain your time back, and increase your impact. All right, let's jump back into the episode. What are some yeah. mistakes that you see um, people in our industry making when it comes to their sales process? So if we've already had, if we mm -hmm. were saying like, hey, like, you know, taking the marketing problem off the table, yeah. what are some things that you see are some common mistakes in that sales process that are holding us back from making the the, the amount of sales that we want to make? Oh my goodness. You're just going to get me started. Yes. I love getting people started. <laughs> get me started. Okay. Well, the first, the biggest one, there's, there's two. Um, so there's one is the, what I call the piecemeal sales process. So they have a script, they have, you know, they have this piece, they have that piece that maybe they got from a coaching program they were in. Um, you know, a lot of sales coaches and business coaches will give you like a free script that you can use. So they have this, this script that they got from one program. Um, they have maybe a, a handling objections from another thing. And really they're shooting from the hip. So it's piecemealed and there's really no clear process. They're just kind of showing up. Um, they're winging it on call, even with this script. And so there's just no real solid sales process in place. And that's super, super common, especially for the businesses that are really struggling to get to that 100K, like they're like below six figures. Usually a big part of that is like winging it in their sales process. And they just don't, I mean, and of course there's marketing problems, but we're not talking about that right now. So um, I see that a lot. And then my clients who are like right around like that 200K, like they're coming into that multi six figures. They're usually the ones that are like really serious and ready to scale up. Like I want to get my sales process in place. Now I have a prospect right now that they've gotten to like 750 K and they want to get to a million and they're, they've been winging it, but they have a really good recurring revenue model for their business. So it's like, they've been able to like really build up their income to that with a leaky sales process. 
So, you know, it, it depends on where the business is. So that was the first thing, sort of like shoot from the hip, winging it sales processes, piecemeal sales processes. The other side that I see is you've gotten the sales process from this guru, right? You join this coaching program where they're going to teach you the A to Z and now you're cookie cuttering it. So you're like trying to do exactly what they do. It's super common for the one call close type models. Um, You know, you get them on the call and it's one call and you have that, you know, that 30, that hour or whatever. And a lot of times those are like cold traffic to a one call close. You got to get them when they're in that high emotional state and really press the pain and get them in there, you know? So, so those, and then there's all sorts of other ones as well, but usually it's sort of some kind of like one call, like type thing. Very rarely do I see people showing co- um, coaches and consultants, agency owners, how to like actually customize a sales process. I'll see that more in the corporate side of people that are like doing B2B kind of corporate sales. You'll see more of that because it's not a one and done. Mm-hmm. So so those are, so that cookie cutter. So I'll, my I'll kind of bottom line it here is that if you have a sales process that's aligned with a guru, but in, in their avatar, but it's not aligned with you, how you like to show up and do your business, your company, your avatar, you're going to lose money at the, in the end of the game. So, yeah. yeah, that makes so much sense, right? Like, so we have people who are on one side of, uh, of the spectrum where they're just like kind of piecing things together. Nothing, there isn't yeah. really a defined sales process. Um, we're kind of pulling from this expert. Maybe we, you know, we uh, bought a digital product here and we're trying to make all those things kind of just work and piecing them together. And then we have other people who are just like, I, you know, their sales process is so cookie cutter that there's no room for, you know, customization. There's no room for personality. There's no room mm-hmm. for them to actually, you know, bring their sauce and their secret sauce and their, you know, mm-hmm. their, their, um, you know, yeah, their secret sauce to the table. Um mm-hmm. And I love that because it's like, you know, we, I guess it's, it sounds like we want to land somewhere in the middle, right? Where we have like mm-hmm. a defined sales process and we, you know, are able to scale that, right? Like, you know, cause we want to make sure that our sales process are scalable also, but then, you know, we don't want to get to this place where someone's just giving you a process and you're just only committing to that and not act necessarily adding your own um, sauce to it. Did I get that kind of right? Yeah. 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 And you want to have options. So I'll give you a, 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 an example story with a client. Um, I had a client who was super indoctrinated into the one call close model. So very high pressure kind of sales model. And this was a woman owned company, woman owned brand, they cater to women. And so she had a super high, like her, she was running, driving a ton of traffic, paid traffic, you know, and the conversion rate was really, really low. And at the end of the day, we uncovered that, you know, how she was selling really wasn't in alignment for how she wanted to show up. And it wasn't in alignment for her prospects because they, some of them like were really like, there was some trauma stuff going on. That's part of like the healing of, you know, the work of the program. And this was a high multi six figure business. So they had made lots of sales. They had done a lot, but as you know, our, um, our landscape has changed in the last couple of years. And as our marketplace has changed, you know, we need to evolve our sales processes. And so for right now, um, the clients needed just a little bit more nurturing, a little bit more trust. And so what we did was we customized basically two options, a two call close and a one call close. So if she felt like my client, she felt like, okay, this person's ready. They're in that high emotional state. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pitch them now. And then she could also customize with different funnels. So she could actually test like this funnel, we're going to drive to the one call, this funnel, we're going to drive to the two call. But at the end, it seemed like the two call close for her was just a little bit more like at home because people could really have that breakthrough, that aha, she would give them homework and then they would come back. And so it did help her close rates. And then also just to feel like more of a connection with her prospects as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I actually had someone, I did a sales call last week and someone actually said to me, she's like, I she was like, I really appreciate that you're not like that high pressure, you know, kind of yeah. sales process. And that's the first time somebody had said some, said that to me. Um, and it wasn't like intentional, by the way. It wasn't like I, you know, was like, I'm just going to be, you know, non-aggressive. It just was like, 
this is just me and I'm not a high pressure kind of person. And so that, you know, that's just how the call ended up. Um, but it did stick out to me that I was like, okay, yeah, I, I guess, you know, she, that wouldn't have aligned with her. Like if I was following somebody's cookie cutter, cookie cutter process, I was like, you got to close right now. Then that person might've actually walked away with a bad taste in their mouth rather than feeling yeah. like, yeah, you know, I, I'm excited to work with you when the time is actually right. Um, so yeah. I love that, that, that what you mentioned, that was a definitely a great example. Yeah. Yeah. And being strategic and having a process for it. Cause I'm, I'm not a high pressure. I've actually, since I moved into the consulting space, um, I am definitely one that like, I'll sleep on it. Like I'll sleep on it before I make an offer, <laughs> you know, like I love before, yeah. like even for me, just, I want to make sure that we're a right fit for both. And so I do like to have, um, either like a good upfront, I have my intake form, things like that. Um, I have kind of my upfront process that I put people through to come into my sales process. But then in, when we make the offer, you know, how that goes and how that initial call goes, I may make an offer, I might not make an offer. But mm -hmm. all of those, there's a lot of intentionality that goes into that of me knowing how to navigate those conversations with people. And so knowing the questions to ask, because if I like, for example, if I'm on a call and I'm on the, I'm on a call with somebody who has, let's say they have a high multi six figure business and I'm on the call with the, the CEO, I call them entrepreneur CEOs and I'm on the call with them and I make an offer. And then they say, Oh, you know what? I got to go, I got to go talk to my director of operations before I can make a decision. Well, I just blew a sale potentially by, you know, now, now I got the, you know, the, my version of like the spouse objection. If you're in B2C, right, I got to go. So it's like, that's why I call it pre-handling objections is kind of like setting up that sales process to get ready so that you anticipate if there's something that could come up. And that you're ready to kind of handle. So th there's no, there's really no cookie cutter because you have to navigate. We're in, you know, human relationships and human connections. And the thing is, is I, like my sales process is unique to me. So I don't push it on people. I, that's where I find I really distinguish myself in the marketplace is like, I'm here to help you find a customized solution for your company and for your business and for your ideal client so that it's something that's scalable on brand aligned with your values so that you can bring on team or your current team can get better results. That's what I'm all about. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Cause I also find that I am similar in a sense, in the way that I create marketing strategies for people, because I'm like, you know, what I tell people is I'm like everything in marketing works, right? Like webinars work, ads work, blogs work, everything works, right? Like there isn't something that you can say like, Ooh, if you don't do this, you won't be successful. Or you can say like, if you bank your strategy all on this, you won't be successful, right? Like there is no hard and fast really in marketing. And so when I hear about people saying that, like, you know, someone gave them, you know, they're like, this is what you have to do. You just have to buy into their process and you just have to follow their process. I'm like, well, there's a whole lot of nuance that goes in into play. And like one of I, one of the things I love to ask my clients also, especially like, you know, because when I work with clients, I typically sit, sit between the marketing team and the CEO. And so mm -hmm. I'm asking my CEO, but the CEO is still, you know, they're still the visible piece of the brand or they're kind of, you know, creating, you know, they're we're creating videos with the CEO talking and stuff like that, or they're creating the thought leadership posts and those kinds of things. I'm always asking like, well, what are your energy levels like? How do you like to show up, right? Like if you don't like to get on video, I'm not going to tell you to go live if that terrifies you, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like, because you don't have to go live to be successful. Um, you have to show up and you have to be visible, but there are so many ways that we can be visible without it uh, without it terrifying you. Um, and that way you show up better and you want to actually commit to the process more. So I'm not going to make people do something that they hate. Um, so I love that you share that similar sentiment in that, you know, sales is a process that can be customized based on mm -hmm. the brand, where you want to go, your goals, you know, what aligns with your energy, your vision. Like there are people who don't do sales calls at all and that's, and they are making a killing, right? Like, but there are people yeah. who their whole business model is built on sales calls and they're making a killing, right? So I love yeah. that the process can just be so customized for um, anybody based on their business. Yes. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give a little context for how this all came about for me. Cause I remember I had a, I had an, a coach early on when I was making the shift from coaching to consulting. So pre pre pandemic, I had um, I had a coaching program. I was working with a lot of startups. I did a lot of private coaching, and then I launched my heart centered sales mentorship circle like right before COVID, and and got that filled that program with amazing people. And then COVID hit, 
And I started doing virtual events and running and leading and training sales teams for virtual events. And so I did that with my mentor. So I had been working with a, a high ticket sales mentor for a couple of years and had gone through her programs. And she really taught that's where I learned like kind of the A to Z, like here is how you build um, an internal process for sales. And mm -hmm. she wasn't teaching all, you know, it was a lot of like functional health coach and, you know, this person and that, right. All these sort of like a lot of B2C businesses. And as a person who was aligning as a sales expert at the time, I didn't really know it, but that's what I, that's where I was headed. I really soaked it up and it was all about customization. It was all about finding the language that, um, that really represents the transformation that your company delivers and the, your unique mechanism of getting those transfer tr transformations. So I learned, um, high level and high ticket offer positioning, and then was able to then go apply that when we were doing our events, I was working with all of these multi six, seven and eight figure businesses coming in. And I was the one that was like writing the positioning statements and building the sales script. So I had a lot of experience. So when I showcased my results, like my, you know, my, the clients and companies I've supported have done over 12.6 million in the last couple of years, like, and of high end sales, like I had my hand in building those sales processes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that, so that's how that all kind of came about. And I, I also attribute it to like having a musical background and kind of being linear in like, you start at the beginning and then you end. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to share a little bit of that journey because I think that that's unique to me in being very process oriented, but also, very heavy on the conversion side. Like, let's not just have a process, like let's get the result that we want as well. Yeah, yeah. I love that connecting the dots really is, I think yeah. that provides so much clarity for people, um, you know, because there's so many times that it's like, we see, you know, we have a problem that we're experiencing. We see where we want to go, but there are so many different paths that you can take that you're like, how do I know which path is the right path for me? And that's why working with experts like yourself or working with experts like me help you to be able to understand that while there are a hundred different paths to get to where you want to go, we can actually just take one and we can stick yeah. to this or we can, you know, make a left when we need to make a left. We can make a right when we need to make a right. Right. We don't need to do everything. We just need to figure out the process that's going to work um, best for you. So I, I love that. Um, so a lot of the people in my audience, uh, one of the things I did a survey recently, and one of the number one challenges was lead generation or like okay. generating enough leads and getting enough mm -hmm. into their business. And I know this kind of sits between the sales and marketing kind of space. So I'm yeah. excited to hear your take on it. But what advice do you have really for those like coaches, service providers, consultants out there that are struggling um, to attract more leads? And how do we then make sure that we're also attracting the right leads into our yeah. system? So not just anybody that has a pulse, but like, how do we make sure that we're attracting enough leads and the, uh, the right leads? Yeah. Yeah. So two ways. So two ways that I love, cause I'm at a point in my business where I'm still doing things organically. Um, I haven't dipped into the, the paid traffic yet. That's on my horizon for 2024. Mm -hmm. So I've built my business organically and have seen both sides, paid media, and, um, and organic as well. And it's really funny because years ago, oh my gosh, like, I don't know, tw I had a coach maybe 2016, 2017, there was just a lot of shaming around organic pay, organic traffic, like paid is the only way to go. You got to be paid. You got to be paid. Do you, you're, right. you're nodding your head. Yeah. Like I am because I remember that. And I'm just like, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I feel like just as a person outside of like, you know, business, I'm always like, well, you don't have to do it one way. I've never been a one way kind of person. I've never been like a, you only need to run ads or you only need to do organic and that's the right way to do it. So I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I just remember a lot of shaming around that. And what I've seen in the last couple of years, especially post COVID, um, even maybe in the last 18 to 20 months of just strategy calls that I've had that I've, I, I just had a call yesterday with a guy that he's getting seven calls a week, all organic, no paid, no paid ads. They have a marketing strategist. So they're, they've got their, their channels, their social channels are producing leads and they need sales help, right? Because they're getting the leads and they need help converting them. So I would say for sure that like organic traffic is, 
is like super important right now in today's business. And so you want to be super consistent. You want to have a strong brand presence. And I, I have my own show. That's how you and I connected. And one of the things I love to ask marketing experts and brand strategists is like that controversial question of like, people will say that building a brand is only for like corporations and Coca-Cola and it's too expensive for the small business owner. But I've witnessed like in growing a brand and really having a strong brand presence that people recognize you, they um, they they might talk about you more, right? So you have strong positioning in the marketplace. So strong positioning in the marketplace paired with really consistent, um, consistent content that's going and then layer on top of that with, and relevant good content and then um, layer that with partnerships. So get your strategic partners who have a complementary service that share the same audience and then find ways to collaborate. So, you know, crossover with speaking or, um, you know, even paid partnerships. So that's one of my favorite ways. Partners has been an amazing way that I have surpassed six figures in my business. And um, because also those partners, like I got a lead because Somebody tagged me in a Facebook post. And so there's so many ways that leads can come to us. Um, the other thing is actually developing like a referral partnership strategy. So where you actually, you know, you target your referral partners and then you pull them together. You have a lunch and learn, a virtual breakfast. You If you've brick and mortar, you take them out in person if you can locally and you build and foster those relationships and show them how you bring more value to them, to their business by, you know, helping their clients further along and, and improve. So those are some of my favorite ways on the Legion side of organic. I have a client that just launched a whole like kind of virtual speaking tour. She had a big audience, paid ads, you know, lar large list. It's like, let's go out there and use your list to, you know, get people into your, into your network and for you to get people into, you know, get people from their network. Yeah. Yeah. Those are such great examples. I hope that y'all were taking some notes because I will <laughs> also say partnerships have been one of the biggest drivers of sales and leads in my business. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I had someone who I've done partnerships with and they're actually going to be on the podcast um, also. Um, or they're actually, they're up. So yeah, either way, they're on the podcast. Y'all go to the show notes. Mm -hmm. I'll like the episode, but, um, but someone who I was doing a partnership with and, you know, she ended up referring me someone, one of her clients after they went to her, she's a very great adjacent business, you know, partnership. Mm -hmm. We work in the same clients, you know, we have, you know, similar goals and similar methods, similar methodologies, but she doesn't talk marketing. I mainly focus on marketing and she focuses on her lane. And mm -hmm. so it's great kind of crossover. And so we've done partnerships together and she even sent me a client after the client went to her and she did her work. The client needed traffic and they were like, okay, well, mm -hmm. I've built out this process for you. Now I need traffic. And so they sent me, sent her, she sent them my way. Right. And so mm -hmm. those are ways that definitely like you can get leads from partners. Um, and so, and like we were, like you were saying, you know, we've done a podcast swap, right? Like mm -hmm. I was on your podcast, now you're on my podcast. So we're tapping into each other's audiences. Um, and so it's really just such a great, uh, a great place for you. If you, and it's one, honestly, probably one of the first places I go, if I really, really need some sales, I'm like, I need to reach out mm -hmm. to my affiliates or my referral partners or my colleagues yeah. say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is how my business has evolved since the last time we chatted you know, and just kind of, you know, showing love and supporting and figure out what they have going on. So there's a lot yeah. of things you can do to really kind of like generate more leads. And, you know, a few episodes before this, y'all make sure that you go back and listen, especially if you're new here, because the last few episodes, and, and I haven't actually, you know, intentionally said this to y'all, but it's been all about lead generation, mm -hmm. <laughs> so long-term sustainable lead generation, because I find that there are a lot of people that end up coming into my space that are, focusing on short-term lead generation yeah. strategies, meaning they're posting on social and posting on social to try to get leads and to get visibility. But there are so many things that you can do that are long-term strategies like YouTube, like SEO, like some of these other, mm -hmm. you know, like partnerships, all of these kinds of things may take time to get set up and time to invest in. But the more you do it and the more, you know, and the, and the longer you give it a little bit of time, they are so lucrative and they pay off so, so well. Mm -hmm. So We've talked mm -hmm. about those people who are struggling to increase their leads. Let's talk about people who are getting leads, but not closing them. Because I know that's another question that you get asked a lot. So yeah. 
what are some what are some things or some advice that you have for those business owners that are like, hey, I'm getting the leads in they're you know, I'm getting a steady flow of people coming into my world, uh, but I'm not closing as many people as I'd like or I'm not hitting my numbers in the closing as many people. Mm -hmm. So what are some where, where would they start with kind of diagnosing that problem and mm -hmm. what advice do you have for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I would do is I would look at their and I would and can encourage them. I mean, the thing is, is you, you can only, <clears throat> you don't know what you don't know. Right. So it's like, you can only see what you can see or, you know, people have blind spots. So really starting to look at your, at your sales conversation and your sales process and so how, you know, am I confident with the, with my conversations? Am I, are there places in that conversation that it's like, man, why did I say that? Or if I had said this differently, or if I'd done that, like, look at those places, like when you're on those calls or after the calls and you've got that instinct that's saying, Hey, red flag, like, listen to those because like, that's your intuition. That's your instinct telling you that there's something that needs to be addressed. So where are you, what are you saying? How are you handling your sales calls in a way that aren't, they're not, they're not persuasive enough. They're not moving people across the finish line. Um, the next part that I would look is what are the most common objections I'm getting? You know, I mean, am I getting the money? Am I getting the spouse? Am I getting the time? Whatever. And why is my offer like, how, so there's two pieces here. So where, let me just back up. So first, you know, top objections. So then I would say, how am I pre-handling those leading up to that call? So we can actually start to eliminate those before people even get on the call. And also how can I build into my, my sales conversation, pre-handling the objections as well. So it's like, yeah, earlier I, you know, I told you about my client, Sally, who was dealing with X, Y, Z and she has this. And so, you know, really it's the same thing of what you're sharing here. So there's ways that you can use persuasion and kind of seeding to, to help not make objections such a big deal. So really looking at those objections and then setting up your process, your sales process to pre-handle them. And then the, the last part I'll point out is your, what I call your offer positioning. And so that is when you go in and you make your pitch, are you customizing that pitch to solve the person's problems? So number one, if you don't know what their problems are, that comes back to your sales conversation. You're not asking the right questions. You're not getting enough information upfront to really know what's going on, the pain that it's causing them, how much it's costing them, all of that. And then when you're making that offer, is it being customized? So if you have this, this, and this, because like features and benefits, you can get 12 calls and three months and yada, yada. It's like, no, okay. Who cares about 12 calls and three months? right? They want to know like, where am I going to be? So when we make that offer, we need to make sure that we're using transformational language, whether it's B2B, B2C, that we've got outcomes, tangible results that people can anticipate that they're going to get. And, and you can be honest, you know, people, if they're like, how, how long can I expect to see an ROI on this? And it's like, it depends, right? It can be instant, and it could be 90 days from now, but here's what I can tell you is that whatever investment, and this is for anybody, you know, whatever investment somebody's going to make, if it's consulting, coaching, like if you put in the work, it's going to compound over time. Like the, the ROI of investing in coaching and consulting B2B or B2C, it's, it's limitless. I mean, the ROI is just limitless. So those are just little wisdom nuggets in there too. But those are like the three places that I would look for sure of where, where sales can be lost. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. So let me recap those for y'all. So it was evaluating your sales conversation. So when you're getting on the phone with people and when you're having these sales conversations, like, you know, figuring out like, what are you saying and how are you guiding the conversation? I think one of the things, and I'll even, you know, say this really quickly for me, um, that became more transformational about with sales, um, with sales conversation is hiring sales coaches. <laughs> like I'm not even yeah. going to lie. I, you know, even, you know, someone who's a marketing expert, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, like I know how to get the leads. I can get people into my world, but my biggest struggle was converting them and actually having mm -hmm. sales conversations that actually had a process and actually, you know, were guiding people to the, you know, to where they need to be and really kind of doing that fact finding and like, what are the current problems? What are they experiencing? What are the channels? All that kind of stuff is really important because then, then after I had, you know, taking, you know, going through some sales coaching and stuff like that, I realized that my proposals 
were needed to be customized to reflect what they were saying in the in the sales call. So mm -hmm. I make sure I take a lot of notes and that kind of stuff. And I'm asking the the right questions. And so that's one of the first key pages that you were saying is like make sure you're evaluating those sales conversations. Even like, you know, having uh maybe even recording some of your sales conversations and having a coach listen, go through them with you, mm -hmm. right? Like, or like I've done practice sales calls with, you know, my past sales coach and stuff like that. So sales conversations, definitely make sure you're evaluating there. Um, second piece that you said, which um, I definitely love, and I, I think that's so um, unique in, into when we have these kind of sales um, discussions, is pre-handling those objectives, bef objections before they get on the call. And so, mm -hmm. they're, you know, what are you doing to make sure that by the time they get to the call, they're already kind of ready? They're already, you know, they've mm -hmm. already overcome those objectives of money and ROI and time and all that kind of stuff. So, figuring out in those sales conversations what the common objections you're getting. And then figuring out how you can, you know, pre-handle them before someone gets on the call. I think mm -hmm. that's um, and then the last piece is your offer positioning. So making sure that it is customized for each of your um, prospects so that they know what they're getting out of it, not just the benefits and the features and how many calls and all that kind of stuff, but they're mm -hmm. like, okay, what, you know, what is the transformation that I'm going to get after mm -hmm. going through this process? And I love what you were saying about the ROI of investing in consulting, because that's so spot on. Every time I've invested with a, co a consultant or a coach or something like that, I have gotten my ROI. I've definitely gotten my money back because yeah. if I'm taking action on what I've learned, that kind of like doing a, no, learning how to do a sales call in 2022 definitely impacts me in 2023 and in 2024 and 2025 because I just get better, yeah. right? Like I have a process that helped me to get started. Um, I start to do these sales calls. I'm practicing. I'm finding my rhythm, finding, you know, what works and what not, what doesn't work to stay on these calls. And that is something that compounds over time. So I, I love, love, love all that you said about those three things. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so tell me, tell me a little bit about your more method. Cause I know you have a signature methodology, uh -huh. um, for helping business owners to really kind of, um, grow and, and experience a lot more freedom in their business. So tell us about the more method and how mm -hmm. service providers increase their sales and revenue. Yeah. So what we do with the more method is when I come in, when I work with clients, there's kind of two avenues that we can take. One is they're like, Celia, I, I want a cash injection in my business. Like I have all these leads. I have all these people that I've talked to. I want to get over the finish line. So um, what I'll do before sometimes we go straight into the more method is to do a five week sales boost where we go in, we look at those leads and in that pro and then we retarget them. We get we do a campaign, get them back on calls and basically take all the lessons that we learned from them not closing and take some of the things that actually we've talked about today. Just like, let's see where we can quick level up the script and love, you know, prehandle some objections and all of that and help people, you know, get cash in on some of the opportunity that's in your pipeline. So sometimes I'll start there with clients. And while I'm doing that, I'll do an audit and I'll start to look at, okay, where are these sales and marketing gaps? Some clients I'll come straight in and we'll just go right into that. And that's what I call them more sales with ease. And that's where I go in and I look at sales, marketing, what's going on. A lot of time it's like an assessment of their team and who they have. Because a lot of times business owners will settle. I mean, I'm sure you've seen this too, where they're like, they have the social media agency or they have this ads company and they've been around for a while and they're kind of comfortable, but they're not great, right? Yeah. They just... They don't love it. It's not great. It's okay, right? So there's like this assessment of like, what are you settling for? And then getting clear on, you know, who needs. So there is a little bit of um, a support that I can provide to help them get that marketing seat filled or, you know, hire on an extra team member or whatever to, to fill that gap. Um, or bring on a better agency or whatever. So we do a lot of time with that. And then I also, have, well, I wouldn't say a lot of time, but there's a process of going through that evaluation and then also going through their sales process and auditing that and seeing, okay, like here are all the places that you're potentially losing money. And just like investment, you know, compounds, all of that loss compounds over time as well. And so then we make a game plan, what we're going to start to fix in what order and start to address those. So that's foundation. Like you got to start here before you can, you know, you can keep scaling up. So um, as we go through, the more method is based on a pyramid and it's not siloed and sort of linear. Like we can't do this, you know, before we do that or anything like that. But there's also like helping them to like systemize their sales process more, um, you know, streamline their documentation. Um, a lot of times clients, you know, they'll have a CFO 
CRM and it's got all this information and data, but they're not using it. And sometimes we just need to create like a little quick um, spreadsheet leads list for them, like top level. Um, they can update in the CRM. Um, I will help them to prepare to bring on a sales team member or improve their relationship with a current sales team member. I have a client yesterday that was just messaging me like, my sales rep is just like, they're messaging me and they're like, I need you to pay me now, you know, put Venmo on my account tomorrow. And so there's no documentation. There's no process for how they're handling that rep. And, you know, there's all kinds of stuff like that, which is to me, it's like, ah, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't handle that. So, you know, and that's where clients will come to me because they want that streamline. They want that simplify. They want that organization. They they're usually easygoing people and they want kind of a smooth humming, you know, smooth running business. Um, Even if they're visionaries, like they really value the operation side and I bring a sp strong operations component. So there's the training up your sales team. There's also um, the leadership component. I have clients that they already have a sales team. They're past a million, but there were just like gaps between sales ops and the sales team. And then the last piece is like launches and events. So that's like my highest level where we can do done for you. We can do consulting, um, all of those pieces. So it, I kind of, I'll meet the business where they're at, but, um, I have a few clients maybe that they, you know, they're past a million and we don't do too much with the audit process of that more sales with ease. It's a little bit more just kind of checking in, but sometimes we'll just go straight to the operations and addressing more of the internal leadership pieces. But I think for your audience, definitely those foundational pieces are, are critical to get to that next revenue level that you're going for. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, and I see that so much with um, marketing as well, that it, most of the time it's foundational stuff that really mm -hmm. needs to be tweaked. It's not yep. that you're not on the right, you know, it's not like people that are like, I'm not on the right platforms. That usually doesn't happen. It's more so for me that you're just not leveraging that channel the best way um, yeah. as, as well as you can. And so there's so much kind of like nuance and foundational things that we can tweak and, you know, that will have a big impact. So I love that your methodology or more method really focuses on having that foundation, um, you know, evaluating that foundation, making it strong. So that way, as you scale up, the, your house doesn't come crumbling down, right? You're building it on, or your business per se, is built on a strong foundation. And so um, love that. Love that we talked about your methodology. Last thing I wanted to talk about, or what are some kind of like trends or data or things that we need to keep in mind for 2024? Because as we're approaching next year, we're all in that space of like, What's going on? You know, what do I need to focus on for next mm -hmm. year? Talk a little bit about um, some trends and data that you find that are relevant for your clients as they're thinking about um, starting the year in 2024. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so we are still in a market of highly cautious, highly aware buyers. Mm -hmm. And so really the, you know, depending on your industry and what you're selling, like the buyer kind of has the upper hand. Um, you, you know, and so, or they feel like they do. They, a lot of buyers will feel like, like you need their sale more than they need your service. Mm -hmm. And so that's just something to be aware of, of like, if you're trying to use like scarcity in your marketing, false scarcity, things like that, um, you know, highly cautious and aware buyers, you know, you, know, you, you can push that fear button and you can push that urgency button, but it, it doesn't always necessarily lead to that result you want. So you really want to look at like, are those tactics that you're using aligned with your market. Cause like me, I would con consider myself like, um, more like a highly conscious buyer, right. I'm very conscious. And so like today I was looking at somebody's landing page and they had a, they were selling a course and, um, they, it was like, okay, you had 11 hours and then the price is going to double. And I had never been to their page before. And I was like, Hmm, that's interesting. Like they're selling customer journey stuff and they're pushing a hot button. And I feel that they just push that button in me, but is that how I want to sell? Like, do I want to come learn that same thing? Right. So people, People are really evaluating like is how you're doing business in alignment with how I want to do business. And um, for me, like when I made a, um, a multi five figure investment with my current coach in, in 2022 last year, it was like she had a business model that really 
really was a match for what I wanted, not in terms of how she showed up, but like how she did offers and how she did marketing and all of that. So on the same side, there's a lot of opportunity for like really high quality, good buyers. If you're positioning yourself in that way, if you're positioning yourself as the expert, as the standout, as the, the one who's different, you know, and you're really like claiming that at, you know, having that voice. And I think that that's why I really align with you, Stacey, too, is like fractional CMO, Facebook ads expert, like you've got this unique, you know, unique mechanisms and unique way of things going for you. And that really stands out, you know, as, as something that's like, ooh, like what's she up to? I want to learn more, you know? I love that. So, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think that the highly cautious, highly aware buyers. And then the other side of the coin is the highly conscious buyer and just making sure that like, if that's who we're calling in, that we're selling in that in the way in that way to them. Um, the other thing is um, adapting your process and strategy. So, you know, when I was actually doing some research for this part of the conversation, um, it was actually very funny because I came across like the same AI generated article on like six different platforms. <laughs> It was like the same bullet points. And I was like, okay. Oh so there's the AI. It was like literally the same thing. But I've been having conversations about this recently, like you, looking at your market and making sure that your market is aligned. Um, your sales process is aligned with your market. So if you're selling to like, like the Gen Zers, like younger, you know, younger buyers don't necessarily want to be on sales calls. So mm -hmm. if you're going for a younger target market, you might need to adapt your sales strategy and your sales process to have more, ro start rolling out more social selling um, that not everybody wants to get on a call, right? So, so those are some pieces to kind of look at uh, adapting um, other trends, um, this came from, I found this out from a LinkedIn expert that I follow, Clarine Mitchell. LinkedIn just hit 1 billion users oh, last wow. week. Mm -hmm. 1 wow. billion users. And what I'm seeing with LinkedIn is that a lot of individuals like you and myself, I would call it, consider us younger, you know, business owners, um, you know, we're not the 60s, 70s, you know, whatever a, age range that I think that kind yeah. of the corporate, the yeah. corporate person persona um, that, that we are gravitating more to LinkedIn for the community and that like serious kind of entrepreneur, serious professional. Mm -hmm. And so I really see LinkedIn being somewhere to just, if you're, if you're gravitating toward it, like to show up and be on LinkedIn, because there's a lot of oppor opportunity there. And for sales, um, the research shows that the, the average income per user is significantly higher on LinkedIn than it is on Facebook and Instagram and other channels. And that, um, yeah, that you can leverage that and, you know, but you have to be visible and have a brand. Um, I, uh, uh, two more pieces is, um, like human connection and personalization. I think we kind of touched on that. And I'll also pair that in with that client centric selling so that just, we're really like, I'm a human, like I might use automation. I might use AI. I might use technology and I'm a human and I'm here to support you in, in, in that transformation or in that outcome that you want in your business. And just really positioning, like we're real human people on the other line because the whole like bot, spam bot, chat, you see every day somebody complaining about somebody, how somebody spammed them in their email or their, you know, their DMs or whatever. So that client centric, human centric, I think is going to become more and more important and more valued over over time. And there could be a point where, you know, the, the people that move away from sales calls start to find that they want to do some sales calls because like their audience is craving some of that connection. So those are some of my, so my tips. And if you have anything you want me to clarify or elaborate on, I'd be happy to. Yeah. I think that those were really, really great, um, trends and things to keep in mind because, and, it, and I think it all really kind of like goes back to this place that we're at in the world where people are craving more personalized, more relationship focused um, conversations and relationships that they have with other people. And that spills over to brands. Um, mm -hmm. I see, I remember like feeling just like, you know, influencer marketing just took off so 
quickly and it became so impactful because these influencers were just regular people like us who just happened to build mm -hmm. an audience and they talk like us. They create relationships with mm -hmm. us. We feel like they were a part of their world, a part of their life. Um, and it feels like that there's a connection. So I love what you said that, you know, we have to build that human connection, highly, you know, highly um, conscious buyers or highly aware buyers. Um, because even as someone, I'll say as an impulse buyer, I'm even more conscious, you know, with, with buying things because I've bought things on an impulse and been like, damn, like, why did I buy that? Or that wasn't, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that just sat on the shelf. I didn't really need it. They just had great marketing. But even now I find myself saying like, oh, wait a minute. No, let me think about it. Let me, you know, because I want to be more aware and conscious of how I'm spending my time, my money, my energy and all that kind of stuff. So even even if I feel like you're in a space where you have a lot of impulse buyers, they still are hesitating a little bit before they go full on impulse. And so as the business owners, as marketers, we have to be able to adapt, right? As people who mm -hmm. are in sales conversations, we have to be, a, we have to adapt as humans who are our consumers are changing. And I love that you also pointed out the, the um, opportunity with LinkedIn. I remember when I was in college, like my, um, our professor we had to take like a like a job kind of class or like a career class where we had to create resumes and all that kind of good stuff. And that's one of the things I love that, you know, that I um, attributed to when I got out of school, I got a job really quickly because I had a whole semester of figuring out how to get a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of the things she said was everybody create a LinkedIn account. Like everybody get on, it was at that time, LinkedIn was, you know, a lot smaller, kind of newish. Mm -hmm. Um, but so she was like creating a LinkedIn account and it's one of those things that I've seen the platform just evolve so much. And in these last couple of years, it's really kind of exploded because they've stepped into the creator space and are realizing that people yeah. do more of that, you know, conversations rather than people to just talk at you. So I love all the trends and everything that you said. I think that those are really, really kind of spot on for where people are at um, today. Mm -hmm. and definitely gonna be super helpful for our audience to understand how they can adapt their sales process in to align with where their people are, are currently at. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's, we talked about a lot today, y'all, we have given, y'all have gotten so much great information. So yes. let us know where everybody can connect with you. If they want to learn more, let us know um, if anyone is looking to work with you, how you, how mm -hmm. they could, you know, best go about starting that conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can connect with me on LinkedIn. That is where my, I'm most active there and hanging out on LinkedIn. Celia Faye Meisel is my, is my name on there. Um, my website is celiafaymeisel.com. I have a show, a podcast and a live stream show called more influence and impact. And then if you are interested in having a further conversation, you can head over to my website or or actually moremethod.com. So that's branded under my signature system, moremethod.com slash strategy dash call. And you can book a call with me and have a sales growth strategy call with me. Obviously you have learned from this conversation that I'm not hard push manipulation. And I do a sales and marketing quick assessment before we get on the call. So I'll do some evaluation on your current systems and processes and marketing and sales before we meet. So I can give you some real value in the conversation. Yeah, I love that. And let me tell y'all, you definitely want to make sure you're following her on LinkedIn. She posts a lot of great content, like a lot of Thank great you. content. Like um, I was just on one of your um, LinkedIn. I was just on one of your lives not too long ago. <laughs> yes. I was just like, I saw the topic. I was like, oh my gosh, absolutely. And I stayed and I just watched the whole thing while I was kind of like, you know, working in the background and listening. Yeah. But Lots of great, great content over there. So definitely make sure y'all following, um, following her on LinkedIn. And we will also have all of your links in the show notes. So make sure that you head to the show notes, y'all. Um, our show notes are on our site. You can go to stacyzeal.com slash podcast or click the link below um, to go to the show notes. And we always make sure that we link um, LinkedIn pages. Um, you know, when you want to book a sales call, all that kind of good stuff will be linked there. So thank you so much for Celia for coming on and sharing such great information. This has been an amazing conversation. I think our guests will get such a great, I mean, our, our audience will get such a great, um, have so many great nuggets that they can take away and apply to their business. Mm -hmm. So thanks yeah. again for coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right, y'all. I will see y'all on the next episode, which will be on Tuesday. So again, make sure that you're following the show. If you got something out of this conversation, make sure you leave us a review because those are definitely helpful in helping our podcast to reach more people so that they can get this information. Cause I want all of y'all to win. I want y'all to make more money, more freedom, implement the more method and definitely see your business uh, skyrocket. So, all right, I'll talk to y'all on the next episode. OMG, that episode was packed with gems. Are you ready for more? 
head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast to get the show notes and to sign up to get our top five podcast episodes to help you streamline your marketing so you can make this your million dollar year. Head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast.